Imagine traveling across the Atlantic from New York to London in just under three hours. Flying higher than any other passenger aircraft and as fast as military jet fighters, the Concorde was not the stuff of imagination, but rather the first supersonic passenger airliner. Introduced to revenue service on January 21, 1976, it was retired after 27 years on October 24, 2003. Cruising beyond 50,000 feet, or about 15 kilometers above sea level at Mach 2, two times the speed of sound, this marvel of aviation was the product of bleeding-edge 1950s and 1960s technology. If you were to hop on a flight from New York to London today, it would take around seven hours, more than double the time it took the Concorde. Design and manufacturing teams from both the British Aircraft Corporation and French Sud Aviation collaborated on this faster-than-sound aircraft. The Concorde was not only a pioneer of supersonic passenger travel, but was also the first airliner to use a fly-by-wire control system being controlled by a computer in the 1970s. It was powered by four Rolls-Royce Snecma Olympus 593 engines. These were turbojet engines which utilized afterburners to propel the Concorde well above the speed of sound. To this day, it remains the only turbojet engine with afterburners used on a commercial passenger aircraft. Traveling aboard Concorde was much like being in a small regional jet, with limited headroom and a narrow internal width of 8 feet 7 inches, that's 2.6 meters, its four breast seating was cramped to say the least. High-priced luxury service was accessible to only the wealthiest of customers, with occasional ticket giveaways for the lucky few. Although it was unique, and a technological marvel, the Concorde never really made all that much money. In the dreams of both the United Kingdom and France, the Concorde would have flown to as many destinations as possible, but this would not be the case. Passenger airliners flying over homes isn't a strange occurrence. The Concorde produced what's called the sonic boom. When an aircraft breaks a sound barrier, shock waves are generated. As a consequence, tremendous amount of sound energy produces a noise which is similar to a thunderclap. This caused alarm to those from ground level with protests against the Concorde. The United States Federal Aviation Administration placed restrictions on supersonic flights over land, making considerations as early as 1969 and eventually finalizing regulation in 1973. Concorde flights were restricted to international ocean routes when traveling to the United States, blocked from one of the most lucrative markets at the time, domestic air travel. In 1973, a stock market crash coupled with an oil crisis saw the price of oil quadruple from $3 to $12 a barrel. The Concorde required copious amounts of fuel on takeoff and to maintain supersonic speeds. The widely used passenger jet of its era, the Boeing 707, averaged 33.3 .3 passenger miles per gallon, in comparison to Concorde's 15.8. Perhaps a victim of poor timing, the Concorde also came up against arguably the most consequential passenger aircraft of its time, the Boeing 747, the world's first jumbo jet. All these factors led to cancellations from 16 airlines who previously had reserve orders anywhere from 2 to 6 aircraft, leaving only Air France and British Overseas Airways Corporation. Though the Concorde had operated for 27 years under less than stellar financial conditions, two catastrophic events would contribute to its grounding forever. Air France Flight 4590 took off from Charles de Gaulle Airport outside of France bound for John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York City on July 25, 2000. A metal strip had broken off a Continental Airlines DC-10 on the same runway before the Concorde. This strip punctured a tire which sent pieces of rubber flying into the fuel tank on the underside of the aircraft, causing a fire. With one engine shut down, and another failing, the Concorde crashed. This would lead to the tragic loss of 100 passengers, 9 crew members on board, and as well as 4 on the ground. It would be almost a year before Concorde would fly again on July 17, 2001, with modifications made such as Kevlar-lined fuel tanks and burst-resistant tires. On September 11, 2001, terrorist attacks carried out in hijacked passenger aircrafts in the United States caused a significant slump in air travel. Air France and BOAC's successor, British Airways, announced on April 10, 2003 that the Concorde would be retired. 
This was following poor recovery from a sharp decline in passenger numbers since the crash of Flight 4590 in 2000 and the subsequent market slump following the September 11 attacks. The end of Concorde ultimately came down to, ironically, aging technology and financial woes. It was on the bleeding edge of technological advancement in the 20th century, becoming antiquated for the 21st century. It required three persons to fly, which included a flight engineer. Many other aircraft had switched to two persons operation. Its analog cockpit with dials, gauges, and bulbs became increasingly hard to maintain, and Airbus, the company which provided parts of the Concorde, decided it would no longer supply replacements in 2003. There has not been a supersonic passenger aircraft since.